Hello everybody, welcome. Today I'm going to make a few comments on the performance of a virtualized PFSense router running on FreeNAS on my HP Microserver Gen 8. The setup is great, it performs really well and it has been fine for a couple of months here at home. It's actually a great setup if you just want to have a single server and don't have too much ambition like I do here and if you have one or two access points you probably don't even need the switch so the only change i've done to my micro server is to install this four port uh, gigabit ethernet nick so i can have my two providers in and a connection to my switch and and then other port there is, is inactive now but i'm going to set up a different vlan over there and then i'm using only one port for management of the FreeNAS instance. With a lot of trouble, I would probably have been able to turn the PFSense installation that is uh, FreeBSD based into a jail for uh, running under FreeNAS. But I don't have time for, for this right now. So I just run it in the virtual machine now. I don't have many troubles with this. But what you need to keep in mind is that first thing is PPPoE doesn't work. So initially I had virtualized my PFSense installation under VirtualBox in Linux and the VM would just crash every 8 or 10 hours. But on the FreeNAS it can run for days and days and days and I have no issues whatsoever. I have allocated 2 gigs of memory and that's enough for me and it just works, right? If I go to devices, I have allocated all the NIC ports in my card. I have VNC, although I don't use it. The initial boot is done via the serial console and storage that I have allocated I don't even know how much. Can I see it? Oh, I can't see it, but I think I allocated 8 gigs. When you log into PFSense, you can see that it's running on the Beehive, and that's the virtualization solution used uh, in FreeNAS. I downgraded my CPU to the dual core E31220L and that's the highest officially supported CPU uh, on the GN microserver. It has encryption on hardware, two cores, four threads. And if you see here, I'm using 10% of memory. If I run something like Snort, then that goes like to 6 or 70%. No swap usage. And yeah, I allocated 9 gigs here, I'm using 17. In UFS and the CPU usage under normal conditions is low. So here what I have, I have my next cloud, there's an Apple TV running, um, my girlfriend's using her laptop, things like that. And my two providers here, DSL and uh, my other one that comes from the roof, it's like an antenna, are here and the LAN port with DHCP. And you see it shows 10 gigs, but of course not 10 gigs, just how the virtual interface advertises the link speed, so nothing to worry about. If you are here, you know how PFSense works, so I'm not going to review it, I'm going to focus on the performance and issues. The only issue that I have is, well, PPPoE doesn't work, and I know my configuration was fine because it worked under the VM um, in uh, VirtualBox and it worked directly on my computer. And the second issue is CPU utilization. Under normal circumstances, and before I had two connections of 50 megs, now I have one of 200 megs symmetric and one of 50 megs. Well, before the upgrade, I had no problems with CPU utilization, but now, I cannot go over 200 megabits per second and I'm not even running a uh, VPN yet. Which means that before I used to run my two gateways in round robin, 
so speed test should give me 250 megabits download and it didn't it would go and stop uh, on 200 megabits just because the CPU was saturated so I changed it to a failover um, scenario and it works so if my connection on the roof goes down then I change I'm using DSL and that's fine and I'm okay to be kept at 200 megabits per second but if you're running a busy file server together with the virtual router and so on then CPU is gonna be a problem um, I'm moving away so I'm gonna go back to a physical router I already ordered the board so I don't mind about that and that's why I didn't install the quad-core CPU back but if you run a busy web server and you want to use high-speed connections then you probably don't want to have this uh, running virtualized with only a, a dual-core CPU anyway let's run the speed test and see what happens I'm gonna first run a test uh, and show you speed test so you see the performance then I'm going to switch to show you the PFSense performance and then the performance on FreeNAS. As you can see, my providers give me the advertised speed. Actually, they are great. I really like the service. So, if you're in the Czech Republic in Prague, go for it. So here I'm not getting the advertised speed, but just because there is a traffic shaper running on a PFSense because sometimes, you know, if I'm saturating the connection, the DNS lookups are very slow and you have bad performance overall, yeah. So if I go back to PFSense, and if I go to the traffic shaper here and I remove the shaper, if I run another test, you see I'm gonna go, I even go above 200 megabits. Oh, it's just a burst. Let's see what happens with the upload. But I should get full upload. But with the traffic shaper, I still get great upload, great performance, sending files to online services and people can do video conferences and so on. Um, DNS lookups don't get low, so I'm really happy with the setup like this. And I actually recommend it to everyone. Because sometimes someone's uploading something and if you don't have a proper traffic shaper then DNS lookups get very slow and you cannot browse the internet. Now I'm gonna enable traffic shaper afterwards, after I'm done with this video. But let's run the speed test again and have a look. The test running and the CPU utilization goes up. I don't trust this uh, counter here uh, too much. I'm gonna show you what happens in top. I see now I'm uploading 200 megabits per second and look what happens to my CPU load. This is a problem because when this happens and there is high utilization my web server gets a bit slower. And yeah I could move the web server to a jail but I prefer to keep it in a VM so it's more portable yeah and if I do it in a jail I'm gonna have problems later or if I just want to run it somewhere else. So look at what happens with the VM. I'm not loading 200 megabits per second and the CPU utilization goes very, very high. And when I had the two connections, it would saturate the two virtual cores that I have allocated to this VM and the server just becomes, the performance suffers. So if you have people uh, writing to the NAS directly and also using the services stored there, it's not ideal. I would still be fine living with that, but I'm moving abroad, the server stays here and I may need to reboot the server for maintenance and since I have the VM virtualized here I need to actually boot the server, be able to uh, web in and unencrypt the storage because I don't save this, the, the encryption keys, I have them with me uh, so whenever I will need to reboot this box my brother when he stays here he will not be able to bring the VM back up and I cannot log in because the router is virtual but if you are running this, if this is your only server at home I totally recommend PFSense virtualized you can have your file uh, share, sharing your printer and etc everything can be done from a very nice 
microserver gen 8 box is just perfect. So this was a quick overview of the issues uh, and particularities of visualizing PFSense uh, on the microserver gen 8 and freeness. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.